Here we are, beautiful Princeton, New Jersey. Yep. We don't know what to expect out here today. Well, let's see. We're gonna walk right into the tent city. Going to tent city. The gospel. We're not going in to say Israel or Palestine. We're going no, in to no. say Jesus Christ. Amen. King there of we kings. Go. Doesn't matter. Way, Howdy, sir. Hey, What's good for lunch? I'm not part of this. I'm not oh. part of this. Oh, that's yeah. okay. Go find your information where you got to find your information. Don't take people's pictures. People don't want their picture taken here. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks. Hey, thanks. No. no. Actually, not. We just wanted to get your opinion on something if you have a few minutes. Um, and do you mind if I film too? I do. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Talk to somebody else. What you doing? Yeah. Hey, can I get your opinion on something? Can I get your opinion? Oh, you want me to do the interview with him? Or you want to do it? This first video is Pastor Tim speaking with a young man who originally didn't want us to record at all. After speaking for a while, he consented to an interview. I think he had some sincere questions about Jesus, as you will see. He was a slender young man who you're not going to see at all because there's no video. You'll see a picture of Pastor Tim. Uh, he recently graduated from Drexel. However, he was on Princeton University's campus uh, in support of the Gaza or Gaza Solidarity Encampment. He he was wearing a one of those checkered uh, scarves that you might see a Palestinian person wear. And um, the recording is going to pick up in the middle of the conversation. Uh, the wages of sin is death. So because they sin, now they die. So they were made to live forever. But now, I don't know if you've noticed, you know, 100 out of 100 people walking around this campus and 100 out of 100 people that lived before, like, you know, 100 years ago or maybe 1,000 years ago, they all die. Right. Right. So that's something that we all are, have to think about eventually. Humans want to suppress that and not think about it, but it's because we all sin and Adam originally sinned and now we inherit this sin problem that we all die. Um, so the Bible says none of us are good, not even one. Um, do you think that you are a good person overall? I have always wondered what it would be like to get to something like heaven and have a tally of like yeah, everything I've done and not really weigh it against what's been good and what's been bad but like how many I don't know words I've read or stuff like that like more more fun and <laughs> less wait so am I are we still going here Joe oh you're going but this is like a video oh that's him. separate okay yeah. you want to go do that because I'm not doing well he I think he doesn't want to oh okay gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> okay sorry Sorry, John. So you're thinking about heaven and you're wondering, like, if you get there, you know, do your good tallies outweigh your bad type of thing? And um, so God actually says that everyone will give an account for every word they ever spoke. Now, that's kind of a scary thing to think about because I've said some things that I'm ashamed of. I don't know about you. You probably can admit to saying some things you probably wish you could take back. What do you think? I think every day you kind of have to... Good to meet you. you I too. gotta run. <laughs> See you, Jeff. <laughs> the Lord bless you guys. Yep. See you, Jeff. See you. I think every day you just gotta come to terms with what you've said and what you've done, and that way you can get to sleep at night. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so John just was gifted with a Bible. Have you ever read anything from the Bible, John? I believe so. Okay. Um, have you I've ever been read the given Ten a Book of Mormon on this campus as well. Oh, there's some Mormon people around? Uh, that was during high school. I went on an art field trip here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Well, that is uh, 
a great gift that uh, Pastor Jeff just gave you. I hope that you do read it. Uh, because if God really spoke through his word, wouldn't you want to know what he said? Yeah. 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 So I hope you do start reading that. Do you think that you will read that book? I got a lot of other books in my list of reading, but this is going to be on there. Okay, good. Do you think that the other books are more important than that book? I feel like... Sorry. Keep in mind, that's probably the most printed book ever made. Yeah, seen it in a bunch <laughs> of hotel. Uh, yeah. Thanks. I don't know what that was. I just Me neither. Uh, some folded piece of paper in here that fell out. <laughs> so how about I turn the uh, conversation a little bit? I'm going to ask you some, some personal questions. So the first one is, John, how many lies do you think you ever told in your life? I'd like to hope under a million. Under a million, <laughs> but it could be close to that number. Uh, no idea. Okay. So how about um? But you admit that you know what do you call a liar? I mean, uh, someone who tells lies, you call them a liar, right? Well, even something where you kind of withholding the truth could uh, be yeah. giving false witness or or not. Doing or the right thing. or saying like just under what would be the truth. Right. So, trying to deceive someone okay. in a way that's yeah. like a white lie, yeah. I say. Do you think God likes that? Probably not. Probably not, right? I mean, so is the eating of the apple that made that possible, mm. right? Yeah, well, okay. that was the first sin that we've all inherited through, through Adam. Because Adam was our representative in the garden. Um, now let me ask you another question. Have you ever stolen anything? Yeah. Yeah? How many things do you think you stole in your life? Less than a thousand. Okay. <laughs> Maybe less, less than, than 500. Okay, cool. Um, now have you ever... I think, I think it could be like not physical things as well. Though. Right. And I assume you're probably not married, right? Or you are married. Right. Not no. married. Yeah, I don't see a ring. So you haven't physically committed adultery on your wife because you don't have a wife but have you ever looked at a woman with lust in your heart that yeah. was not your wife yeah you have so jesus says even if you didn't commit a look adultery um you still have if you looked at a woman with lust in your heart so you've committed the deeper meaning of adultery so how about um have you ever used the lord's name in vain yeah okay have you ever noticed you've never used like buddha or uh let's say, uh, Muhammad or, you know, anyone else's name, but it just has to be, you know, oh my God, or Jesus Christ, right? Those that's are an the interesting words. point. That's an yeah, interesting I hadn't point. thought about that. Yeah, but it's in, now, did you know that that's in the Ten Commandments that don't use the Lord's name in vain? But yet, yeah. people do it all day long, right? I, I feel I've heard that that also applies to, like, not saying something happened because of Jesus Christ or... Yeah. When it's actually something that, you know, man has done. Yeah, that could be. That's that's possible. So, you know, I'm not judging you, John, but from what you've told me, you've told me that you're a lying, blaspheming, adulterer at heart thief. Would you agree with that analysis? I think the at heart is a bit of a jump to a conclusion. Jump to conclusions. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay, you'll admit to the other three, though. That it's happened. That it's happened. That yeah. So sounds like a, lies, so. a parking ticket that got mailed to one of my coworkers, <laughs> and it was just this this thing where you go take a quiz online, and it's like the same questions, and it's like, oh, you you have done all these bad things, you must repent, mm. but also no amount of repenting will help, because Jesus Christ came and saved you from your sins, but. Well, so if you think all about sins it, are still bad yeah so kind of so if you think about it like you are sinning against a holy god so you so you've admitted to you know going against three out of the ten commandments so if god were to judge you on his moral law right the ten commandments would would you be innocent or guilty i think it it happens to uh matter like whether you're honest about it and whether you're sorry for it. Well, let's or, see if we go to court, right? And, you know, you witnessed me 
just taking Joe's life, right? I just killed him right here on the spot, and we're in court, and you're, and you're an eyewitness to it. There's evidence that I killed Joe, and I, and I you know, <laughs> Joe's dead, and I go to court, and I'm just like, you know, well, I still feel like I'm, I'm kind of a good person, and, and, you know, it's just this one time, um, you know, could you let me go, Judge? Well, there, there are a lot of factors that go into judging someone. Like, was it out of self-defense? Like, Right, no, this is just me sitting in the park. You know what? I'll think I'll kill Joe. So, Where did those laws come from? Man. Right. Self-defense? Man made them. Then the, it's, there's God's laws. Oh, okay. Those come from God. If you take, you go to the Ten Commandments in Exodus 20, take a couple pages over. That's where they're. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Sorry I had to interrupt. But I am just trying to reveal that, you know, there is bad news that we've all sinned against God. And God is, he's not like a corrupt judge here on earth. He's a good and righteous judge where he does punish evil. So, you know, you've heard of Jesus Christ and what he's done for sinners. We're all sinners so that we cannot, we, like, we can't be in the presence of God and live with God eternally because we're sinners. Like, now we're destined to go to hell if we don't repent and trust in Jesus because Jesus is the only way. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So meaning like, there's no way to save yourself. Like, you know, you have a better chance of taking that soda can and throwing it to the moon. No matter how hard you try, you're not gonna get that soda can to the moon. So it's like, no matter how hard you try to do good and, and save yourself throughout life, it's not gonna work. That's why you need Jesus Christ, the one who lived a perfect and good, righteous life that we couldn't live, and then became the perfect sacrifice on a cross. So he died on a cross and rose from the dead. And then anyone who believes that message is the gospel. Anyone who hears and believes the gospel is saved and is deemed a child of God and entrance into um, God's kingdom based on not what they did, but what Jesus has done. So Jesus paid your punishment and your debt that you owed and then has given his righteous life that he won and and has given it to you so that you can walk in to the kingdom of God uh, with your sins forgiven. Now, does that make sense? Do you think that that could be true, John? Well, I think I don't really know the full extent of what repenting is, having not gone to church my whole life. Okay. Like, so, yeah, so repent. It is tricky. So repenting, so what repent means is to change your mind or to turn around. So all of us are doing and thinking the wrong thing throughout life. We're prone to do that. That's why we need God's word to change our thinking and to renew our thinking, to think about the right things, things of God. But every man has gone, gone their own way and determining right and wrong for themselves, just like Adam and Eve did, and has gone the wrong way. And now God has called some people and reached down to turn some people around. That's repenting turn away from a lifestyle of sin and living life your own way and turning towards faith in Jesus Christ that can save. So it's not just about being in a booth next to a pastor? And no, 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 yeah, yeah, don't believe that lie. So, yeah, so Jesus is the only mediator between God and man. He's fully God, fully man. He's perfect for it. So Jesus is the one that speaks on our behalf to God, but it's not some priest in a booth. <laughs> okay. He's a sinner too. Yeah. Do you have a uh, Catholic background for your family? I guess my grandpa was Roman Catholic. I grew up Roman Catholic, so did Joe. A lot of us did. But we repented even from that and turned around because God has called us to something greater, to be a disciple and, you know, a student of who God is and a student of his word. So we just go around sometimes to campus and, and try to spread the word, the, the gospel of Jesus Christ, because that's what saved us. And, uh, you know, we're called to do that by, yeah. you know, being Christians. That's what we do. So what do you think? Do you respect us doing that? Do you believe any of this? Sure, yeah. It's always respectful to talk to people, get their opinions, try yeah. to spread what you believe is right. Yeah. And, yeah, then I have a question for you. Is Great. Uh, calling back to what you were saying about, like, Jesus has never done anything wrong. Like, yeah. I don't want to be disrespectful, but I've sure. heard of these other books that aren't in the Bible of, uh, I think they're called the Apocrypha. Yeah, the Apocrypha. Yeah, so that, I think it, that's the book that talks about Jesus' childhood and how, like, he would use his powers kind of 
willy-nilly and like kill people just by saying something about them dropping. And I think you're referring to uh, some of the uh, things like the Gospel of Thomas oh, yeah. was written three or four hundred years after Jesus' death and resurrection. Mm -hmm. The Apocrypha were uh, a bunch of books that um, uh, they were Jewish history books that the Jews never accepted as scripture in the Old Testament written between 400 B.C. and Jesus' life. Uh, but they didn't talk about Jesus. That was, uh, it's where we get Hanukkah from and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. But, but yeah. So, yeah, so, so Jesus, the book of according Thomas. to the Bible, that, you know, according to the New Testament, that's always been accepted as um, the canon of Scripture, uh, has never, never did anything wrong. There might be mm -hmm. made-up stories about Jesus. I mean, even the uh, Quran says things about Jesus, about how he's even a prophet and will come back and judge the world. Um, but they only see him as a prophet, not God or the Son of God. And they don't see him as the one that died on the cross and rose from the dead. But that's the very thing you need to believe to be saved. So there's lies out there. Um, Jesus says the devil is the father of all lies. So I think that the devil really is behind all the other religions in the world um, because it's all they're all lies. And, you know, you, you seem like a logical guy. If Jesus is saying, you know, I'm the Christ, follow me, I'm the Son of God, and you know, we look at Christianity and we're saying that Jesus died on the cross, he rose from the dead. You know, he either did do all that stuff and he is the son of God who did all that, or he isn't. You can't just make up two worlds where, you know, I, you know, he's this and he's also that, but like, that's true for me. You believe that, that's true for you. That doesn't work, right, John? Like two plus two, if you make a world where two plus two equals four, you can't live in the same world and make that equal five and four. You know what I mean? If that makes sense. So, like, just by logic thinking, like, if Jesus is saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is either telling the truth, or he's lying, or he's a lunatic. So, do you have beliefs about, like, other people's religions not being the same, affecting the collective and hurting, like, your chances at getting into heaven? Yeah, sure. I, I studied a lot of um, religions at one point in my life, when, like when I became a Christian, because I wanted to see, like, am I believing the right thing, or they, do they think they're believing the right thing? And I've actually come to the conclusion that, you know, Christianity is the only religion worth even following, um, namely because you get eternal life and, and all your sins forgiven, um, and, and you have the real Jesus with real historical facts to back all that up. Um, but the reason why we do preach now is not because we're like hate people with other religions. We want them to convert and be saved too because we once were far off and lost. So I'm not concerned with what they believe because I've come to know that I have the truth because God has revealed the truth to me. So when a lie comes about, you know, it's, it's easy for me to identify it because I have the truth. Like, right. have so you ever you're not just doing it for yourself. Yeah, I'm not doing it for myself. God yeah. rescued me and our allegiance, Joe and I, our allegiance is to Jesus Christ first and foremost. So if someone comes along and they don't like what we're doing, we're not going to pay it much mind because we're, we're trying to please God. We're not trying to please man, if that makes sense. Yeah, you, Tim and I were talking in the car on the way here and uh, we were talking about, like, I'm in sales. I have a, a tech company where I'm a tech broker and uh, we're talking about uh, how this is what we're doing right here, evangelizing, sharing the good news of Jesus Christ is very similar to sales. Most, some people think that sales is coercion. You gotta be good at coercing people and twisting them into doing something, but it's far from the truth, especially business sales. The idea is you wanna go and see, does this person see that they have a need, right? They have a need for a, a something and will they allow you to help them? Those are the two things and that's what we're trying to do is we're going out trying to see if can can we show people their need like he shows you you know all these things that you've you know, all these sins that you've been engaged in but he wants you to see that because of those sins you can't be next to a holy and perfect god and a holy and perfect god wouldn't logically allow you near him but that there is so you have this need so first he wants to see your need and then the second thing is will you allow us to help you Big yeah, question. we're coming out here because we love you, John, and we want you to make a decision to start living for Christ and, and really have a great purpose in life. This is cool that you're, you know, Pastor Jeff said that you were zealous and everything. You know, we could use people like you for the gospel and where you 
can actually be rewarded for that when when your life is over and God is giving out rewards. He will not look at your sin, but look at the, the good things that you've done for the sake of Jesus Christ and reward you and, and give you his kingdom. So we're I, I do have that. another question. Sure. Is uh, How do you like balance the thoughts in your head of like our beliefs are the right ones and we want other people to be happy and we won't really be worried by other people saying that we're wrong like how how do you you balance like i wouldn't say hypocrisy but something where you don't give the same like like you don't come off as proud or arrogant type of thing? No, like you don't disrupt other people's right. beliefs and ways of living and so I think historical that's culture. Nature is like you don't want to do that. You don't want to disturb other people. Like we don't want to just come up to this protest and, and believe different things and, and, and start trouble for no reason. You know what I mean? We, we come because, one, we saw Jesus do it. Jesus was not afraid of conflict because Jesus knew he had the truth. Like, even when people heard Jesus talk, they're like, this guy is different. He speaks with authority like he knows what he's talking about because he did. He was the God of the universe. So when we see Jesus model it for us and then, you know, the believers after him, I, it makes it a little bit easier because we know it's true. So it's like, your soul is on the line, John. Like, your soul is depending whether you believe in Jesus Christ or not. So for me, like if I was on the outside, I would hope someone comes and shares the gospel with me. So out of love for you and, you know, out of love for God, we, we come and try to share that with you, no matter if people don't want us to or not. Sorry, That's very nice. I do think I have to go Good now. Morning. Yeah. Ritual going on over there. Do you mind moving back so that it's... Well, we're about to wrap up anyway, yeah, I, I think, with this conversation. I talk to you about something too. So, sorry. So, John, any last thoughts? Um, we'll wrap this up. Any last comments or thoughts? Thank you for the Bible. All right. All right. Thanks, John. Hey, John, let me give you my card in case you want to reach out. Sure, thank you. I don't know if I asked you to do that. Any other questions, I'll talk to you. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Cool. Nice talking to you, John. So, so sorry, Jesus says in John 3.3, 3, just for the reference so, so the viewers yeah. might know, that Jesus says you must be born again to enter the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. So you are, just for the record, claiming to be born again. Yes. Okay. Now, I... I will say to you that I then met Father McSee as I was waiting one February night to hear a speech by Chris Smith, Congressman Chris Smith, local to this area, mm -hmm. champion pro-lifer. And uh, it was a no-show because it was a heavy winter storm. But I was sitting next to this priest, he was in a long black Catholic cassock. And we got to talking and I told him about my reason why and my pro-life conversion and so on. So come talk to me. So I did talk to him and I found that uh, I was very moved by the doctrine of the Catholic faith. Mm -hmm. When I think about it, the evangelicals, but also the Catholics, they're, you know, doctrinally pro-life. And uh, there's a lot of history and tradition and ritual that appealed to me, and I remember back from my youth, as um, when my grandmother took me to a Catholic Mass. I was about seven years old, and I remember the incense and the bells and all the rest of it, and it always had an impression upon me. Mm -hmm. And as I told you, I was baptized as an Episcopalian, so I was yeah. familiar with ritual, which I right. appreciated. Right, ritual. So I kept going, I kept going, and I, in the end, through his tutelage and so on, I finally decided I'm going to become a Catholic. Mm. Partly because, I have to tell you, my wife is not a uh, Christian, free thinker, yeah. as was her. She's from uh, Chinese from Singapore. Okay. So I was very mindful of her sovereignty and her independence. You know, we have to respect everybody where they are and meet them where they are. But I also, in studying Catholic doctrine, came to understand that, and this is a bit in variance with uh, evangelical thinking, you know, John 3.16 tells us that we, uh, you know, we believe unto Jesus Christ and we will be set free. Yep. Um, Catholic doctrine is actually more encompassing and inclusive than that, which is to say, I was worried about my wife's salvation, but Catholic doctrine does enable somebody who's not a professing Christian to be saved. Right. Evangelicals so, don't quite know that so much. But. Right. So there's only one problem with that, though, mm -hmm. is that that really doesn't matter if it's not true. Right. Because if God's the one that 
is the judge and and says in his word mm. that you're only saved by believing in him the one true god and his son jesus christ by believing in him the believing in the gospel and becoming yeah. born again mm -hmm. if you don't have a profession of faith in 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 jesus christ dying on the cross and rising from the dead mm -hmm. and um and believing what's written then you're not going to see a need to to go proclaim the gospel because like we like joe and i we see the gospel is what saves mm -hmm. so like to Understood. me if if my girlfriend was a catholic and and i just said you know what well i'm a born again christian but i'm going to convert into being a catholic just so i don't have the pressure of converting her but really i think you should go back to being a born again christian <laughs> and make sure your wife's soul is saved well so god works in mysterious ways and i am i, I am humble in my faith mm -hmm. and uh i came to a conclusion about that doctrine through pretty intense study Mm -hmm. I've got enormous respect yeah. for the evangelical approach. Which There's doctrine is it? That you're... The, do the doctrine of the Catholic faith on salvation enables potentially someone who's not necessarily saved in an evangelical means, which is yeah. to say not professing John 3.16, to be potentially saved. That's God's decision. It's technically, actually, they don't. Like, they will, it's, so, as a, as a, as a, big thinker or free thinker you'll appreciate this i weeded out catholicism because it was inconsistent and arbitrary mm -hmm. and in the in the catholic doctrine while a muslim can be saved right a or, muslim uh, can be saved. yeah absolutely according to their doctrine mm -hmm. so could a buddhist mm -hmm. or uh, a hindu but anyone Not who a buddhist there's no particular salvation in buddhism well, that's what I mean. But but the Catholics would say, hey, as long as you believe earnestly in your faith, you can be saved. But if you believe in faith alone, or right. the five solos, right. in, in faith alone, right. by uh, uh, scripture alone, by faith alone, yes. you are anathema, according to the Council of Trent. So this gets into solo scriptura versus... Uh, um but they've they've carved uh, out a, a unique place. And faith and so on. The Catholics have. My point yeah. is, the Catholics have carved out a unique position. Mm -hmm. Well, anyone they say anyone your your doctrine has an exclusion for right. us. Right. Is what I'm saying. Don't know about the exclusion for us meaning evangelicals. Evangelicals so, or anyone that believes in the five solas. So anyone who's yeah. reformed. I think, but in a theology. I think the issue here, and I had a long I've, Mr. D, my evangelical friend, uh, and I have debated this quite a lot. It's about the. Uh, Contest between solo scriptura and, or sorry, uh, justification by faith and justification by works. Yeah. So Catholics have more justification in the works realm. That's understood. It's not to say they don't have justification by faith, which I think is an error that evangelicals put upon Catholics. Mm. But my point is, uh, I, I came to understand this in my own understanding mm -hmm. that you know faith alone gets me about 80 percent of the way. But I also have to live and practice the faith, which I do by manifesting good works, mm. uh, it, it, as motivated by my faith. So I see it as a combination of faith and works together. Mm. One is not a, exclusive to the other. And back to the wife, I've just thought, um, uh, she was the one who said to me, uh, you know, because um, she was very suspicious of my evangelical friends in Hong Kong. Sure. I was going to John Wimber concerts at the time, you know, I was all for the emotion, the emotive elements, but it was, she was very suspicious of this, and she has a very practical sense. So she said, you know, if you're going to be going to a church, why don't you belong to a real church? I said, you a real church. Well, you know, like the Catholic church, that's a real church. Mm. That was her sort you of material. fell for the rope-a-dope. Well, it, I wouldn't, <laughs> I'm not falling for the rope-a-dope. Like, you have to understand that I'm, I, I'm very serious in the self-study. Yeah, I know you But are. when she said that to me, yeah. that said to me, she's... Because she then revealed to me that she had a Catholic education as a schoolgirl. Mm. Oh. And then she had an Anglican education. And in you wanted England. to be respectful of that. Respectful and also, you know, mindful as I was about my view on salvation. If that would be one way to get her into Christianity, mm -hmm. you know, evangelical or not, right. that would be a benefit. Mm -hmm. I also then found out that her sister was a kid Catholic from way back. And her Buddhist mother, mm. Abu, as we called her, uh, then went on to have a deathbed conversion from Buddhism to Catholicism through the intercession of one of her Catholic lady friends for mm. many years. Mm. Anyway, so why am I saying this? It's not to diss 
evangelical mm -hmm. isn't at all. No, I'm a great beneficiary of it. Yeah. It is to say that in my own circle and experience, um, you know, we're all about trying to populate heaven and depopulate hell. And, uh, you know, if I can get somebody halfway there or 80% of the way there, especially my loved ones, uh, I would be very pleased with that. My son became a Catholic, became a Presbyterian, as it happens. Mm. Uh, uh, he has passed since. My daughter mm. is uh, an atheist, so I've got a lot of work, unfortunately, to do, and yeah, I'm trying to evangel evangelize. In yeah, my evangelize. Own, that's my what you got to do. But I do that through the modeling of the faith, uh, and that's partly where the works comes in. Because if I if I come on with the scriptures and the tracks and all the rest, they turn off. So my strategy at the moment, I don't know if it's working is that I have to do a lot more to improve my own heart and my own walk mm. and manifest myself better to be more of an exemplar yeah. so that they may be attracted to the faith. So, the yeah, so I agree with you. Um, mm -hmm. Faith without works is dead faith, yeah. not a right. real faith. Right. But I think the difference is we believe once you have life-saving faith, and you're a born again Christian, mm. good works are definitely gonna follow you because you're you're made new and now your desires are different to do good things. But what you're saying is um, Christ's death and burial on the cross is, is only gonna get you, faith in that is only gonna get you about 80%, but then you gotta complete the rest on your own. I think that would be probably taking away from the glory of God and, and, and the gift that he's given. So do you think that maybe, maybe we should just call people to repent the old-fashioned way well, and that, put their faith in Christ to be saved? Repent? You're standing on a campus here that started as an evangelical Presbyterian college, We know, college, yeah. Right? We love that. Very John much. Went outside and oh, the, uh, man. You know, so our greater, pastor likes to hang out over there. And, the and Great tell, Awakening, you yeah. know, very big in this part of the country. Yeah. Very important Amen. in our yeah. American history. Yeah. Black so, Robe Regiment. But it's turned. Yeah. It's turned into well, okay, look what we got going we'll, on. We'll talk about this in a second. <laughs> you should, you should. I have some thoughts about this in a second. But I would say to you, um, I don't think there's anything. Given, yeah. the, given the crisis that's in the world today, forget just this. Yeah, right. But I don't have to tell you about what, and you're working with youth. So, right. you know, the secularization of youth, oh, yeah. the Terrible. paganization of the culture, the dechristianization. So yeah. don't we have a lot in common? Oh, we and, sure and do, we, yeah. And it's a freaking uphill battle that we yeah. have ahead of us here. Oh, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I respect you, Tom, so, like, you know, for, so I, for what you're saying. I, I, am, uh, I try to be, and given the walk that I made, you know, I try to be ecumenical and inclusive and humble. So that's where I am today, but I, I cast no flies on, you know, the, how I got here. Uh, and, in fact, I'm very prayerful and thankful for uh, all elements of it. So now, what do you do here now, Tom? Are you a professor? Or? I'm retired. Uh, oh, okay. I was in the banking business for 20 years, and then I uh, got into the nonprofit business. I helped found a little foundation here for a very well-placed university in Nairobi, Kenya. And then uh, my son, sadly, contracted schizophrenia, mm -hmm. and uh, wow. that was a major life shift for me. And so I had to stop working, get him sorted out, and through that I went back to get a second master's degree, this time in psychiatric rehabilitation, okay. which is the art, science, and practice of uh, helping individuals with psychiatric disabilities mm. achieve recovery on their own terms as they define it for themselves, a lot of agency. And I went to work in the field. So I was uh, administrator, director, uh, administration director of uh, a well-placed mental health uh, recovery outfit mm. statewide here in the state of New Jersey. Mm. But I'm since retired, and in my retirement I do a lot of work with uh, mental illness, okay. uh, and psychiatric disability, and so on. So. so we do have to probably get to interviewing some other people before we want to leave. Indeed. But um, do you want to ask any questions, Joe, or maybe you have questions for us before we cut off? I don't off? have any questions. I'm uh, loving your T-shirt. Thank uh, you. <laughs> Jesus saves, and I'm a disciple uh, who lends a hand. Mm -hmm. um, I would say, uh, in relation to what we have here, this is um, a very heartfelt demonstration. Uh, as to what people in this camp here are perceiving to be evils being committed uh, in the Middle East. It's a very complex issue. I think it's being very simplistic and somewhat manipulatively rendered here. Uh, and it, I think we have evidence here of a struggle of culture. Um, it's a struggle of religion, but it's fundamentally a struggle of culture. Religion informs uh, both, uh, both sides of that. 
So um, I'm patiently waiting to see how this resolves. I suppose it will resolve peacefully. But I am also just taking to heart uh, this call that I hear from me, that uh, we have to also be strong in our own faith, also in our own uh, evangelization, also in establishing what are fundamental principles of uh, righteousness and um, correct thinking. It's been okay. sadly an absence of this, a lot of this going on here. There's uh, the, the diatribes, the rhetoric here has been sadly uh, uh, ahistorical and manipulative in many respects. However, I extend my heart to these people and wish that uh, we can have more dialogue. Uh, I'm not trying, yeah. to, I'm not here to convert or persuade anybody, but just to, first of all, understand and dialogue with people. <laughs> well, you're in a different role. I know, I'm just but, uh, I don't. But you would also, I'm sure, agree. Uh, you know, we have to be, we Christians especially have to extend our hearts in faith. Yeah. And, and extend, and then... Uh, like uh, sheep without a shepherd. Sheep that's without what, a shepherd. That's what we kind of yeah. see we are, as. we are a soft people. We are uh, uh, God-driven people. And yeah. yet we are also uh, focused on righteousness and the... Uh, you know, God is shining a way uh, in the path with, by which we should walk. So, Amen. We're here to it's, share to people that, it, it, I mean, people without Christianity, yeah. there is no liberty yeah. to have these kinds of demonstrations. Uh, I don't want to get into these people, what they believe really yeah. about the demonstration, but I want to yeah. share with them that where their freedom, where their freedom to, to speak and think, the freedom to speak comes from the Black Robe Regiment founded here at Princeton University. Well, the ultimate, I mean, Christianity is a liberating faith. It is. Right? And it's but what is liberty? Based. Yeah, well, although God, we know from the Bible that, that we are slaves in one way or the other. We're mm -hmm. either slaves to sin or we're slaves to Christ. Yeah. And, but it is in You want to serve a Christ, good master. Correct. And it's yeah. in Christ that uh, we have our ultimate liberty. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, so I have a gift for you just for well, talking with us. It's not, a, it's not you know, I'm not Dinner giving you any money to today. Yeah. Nothing crazy. Oh, but you. hey, I think Sorry. someone like you would, would yeah. find this of great value. Okay, How you. a Catholic oh. can be sure mm. of okay. heaven. All right. Yeah. So, I, that. Yeah. I appreciate the sincerity with which you offer. Yeah. And I congratulate you on your important work. I mean, even you may have the most important role in your church. You the youth pastor. So I mean, I, treat I them, them well, happen. train them well, and uh, abide in them. As you, I know you're already faithful in your, in your walk, so uh, you, I appreciate you're doing good that. work. Yeah. Give it up, man. Yeah. I appreciate that, Tom. Yeah, thanks thanks you. for talking. Tom, let me share one other thing with you. Yes, okay. Don't forget that Sola Scriptura can withstand the walls of any church. Mm -hmm. So you can be, I know plenty, I know Catholic deacons mm -hmm. that will not deny the five solas, that will reject a lot of Catholic doctrine. But the, the real thing is, inside that Catholic church, a lot of people are, are, are rejecting doctrine at all and the leadership doesn't agree within itself well, it's a let very me start strong on the leadership yeah but let me say one thing i had a mentor bring me along and i've already told you about the story of uh you know uh you can exhibit a lot of faith in your daily life why can't you put faith in christ mm -hmm. this mentor later also told me look because i was explaining as you are to me very nicely you know i don't get it there's so many contradictions and so many of this that the, other, mm -hmm. the doctrine is difficult it's mm -hmm. complex mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I said tom let me just say to you, think on this. It's not about resolution. Mm. It's about application. Mm. Think, uh, think less about how to resolve all these conundrums and difficulties. And so yeah. on. Just be about the practice. Yeah. Uh, try to apply yeah. what you know right. as best you can. Right. And you'll be doing, you yeah. know, you could, you, right. maybe you'll go to a theology, theological seminary someday yeah. and you can work on all the resolution. Yeah. But I've taken that to heart. Yeah, you know, and that's sure. why I feel great affinity yeah. with my evangelical friends all yeah. the way. That uh, yeah. you know, I got we lots do, of Catholic we, friends. We can yeah. uh, we can debate, we can dialogue, and we can even argue. Yeah. But our fundamental basis and tradition, yeah. as I know from John Witherspoon, who stands right in front of that chapel, yeah. is uh, still solid. Oh yeah. And and we have so much more to have to worry about in yeah. a secularizing. Oh, yeah. Paganizing age. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. So we are we are allies. We are just I, you know we thought we talk about it all the time. It always comes up. Yeah. We're talking about eschatology. You know, it's yeah. like we're gonna worry about eschatology back when we get to ninety yeah. percent of the Christians. Ninety percent of the people in this country are, are following Jesus Christ. Yeah. Well, we got a long way to go, and uh, we have a lot of. <laughs> we time. really do. We have a. Uh, but we got to show them that there's no inconsistencies in the but Bible But I do at appreciate all. Yeah. you being bold coming up, saying that you're a Christian. And, well, who and was bold to come beliefs? up to whom here? I was just standing here. <laughs> <laughs> right, but thanks we can so be much. Yeah. God bless you. Keep up the good work. Yep. All right, and all keep right, up man. with the children. Thank you. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye-bye.
Hey there. What's up, man? What's up? How are you? Better you than like? we deserve. <laughs> what did uh, you say? I said better than we deserve. Lovely. Yeah. How about you? I'm doing pretty well. Where do you think you go when you die? Wait, hold on. Maybe ask him if, you, if he's nah, okay. We can, we can do that. Uh, yeah, we can talk about this. You want to talk about All it? All right, hold on. I think we can sit right here. Is that cool? How long is the interview going to be? <laughs> as long as Plus you want it to be. Five minutes, probably. Yeah, yeah five, five's good. All right. Am I recording, Joe, just to see? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, you're good. Okay. You're good. So, do you mind holding this, or I can hold it for you, whatever you... So just I'll hold, hold it. Hold the whole thing, yeah. yeah. So, all right. all right, the first question for you, well, my name's Tim. What's your name? I'm Sam. Sam, nice to meet you, Sam. You want the me first... to look at you or the camera? Look at that. We can just have a conversation, I guess. Just so have the a first question I have for you is, Sam, what do you think of the afterlife? I think it's a very real thing that's not considered enough in mm. this world and it leads people to act the wrong way. Oh wow, that's a good answer. Okay, so what do you think that the afterlife might be? I think the afterlife might be a place where our soul considers what it's done in this life and how it can improve in the next. Mm, okay, so have you considered um, maybe like, uh, like a heaven or hell type thing? Have not. I, ha I have, I have. I have thought about it, yeah. Do you think that could be true? Only time will tell. Only time will tell. Do you think that if heaven or hell is, is a real thing, do you think, uh, like, who would go to heaven and who would go to hell? I think people that would go to hell would be those who act in a way in this life such that it would fit who they are. Mm, okay. And the same with heaven. So kind of like good people go to heaven, bad people go to hell type thing? Yeah, and I think when you say good and bad, it, it's more like, what type of, not necessarily just good and bad in the way you act, but also the sort of reality you want to live in for eternity. So like if mm. you're going to hell, if you're somebody who desires a competitive, sort of hateful environment and the opposite for heaven. Oh, okay. All right, so do you think that you're a good person? Elaborate. And that would, like, a good person, how you would define it, like, um, like... would I go to heaven after this, like... Yeah, you think that you would go to heaven? Currently, no, but I'd say by the time I die, I will. Okay. What will keep you from going to heaven now, and what's going to save you from the time you die? Prefer not to elaborate. Okay. Uh, so, can I ask you some more questions? How about one being, how many lies do you think you told in your life? Thousands. Thousands? Okay. Have you ever no, stolen? Hundred, hundreds, hundreds. Hundreds? Okay, maybe not thousands, hundreds. Okay. Yeah. Uh, are you sure that's not one well, lies you're telling me? I'm just kidding. It's an estimate. It's an estimate. <laughs> estimate. A generous estimate. Yeah, okay, yeah. generous estimate. Have you ever stolen anything before? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, have you ever looked at a woman with lust? Never in my life. Never in your life? Okay. No. Have you ever looked at a man with lust? No. Okay. Wow, okay. Um, have you ever used the Lord's name in vain before? The Lord being Jesus? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, that's funny because you never would, you know, say any other Lord, right? <laughs> or any other person's name. God. Yeah, you say God, yeah. Yeah, God, Jesus. But you never say, like, you know, Buddha or Muhammad or, or things like that. Maybe because they're not God, but why is it that we like we wouldn't ever say our mother's name and, and use it as a curse word, but we do that with God for some reason? Just a, just a thought. But yeah. what you um, told me so far is, you know, I'm not judging you, but you told me that you're a lying, uh, blaspheming uh, thief. Would you say that's real? Well, you said that this is what I've done in my life. Yeah. So in the past, currently, no. Currently now, okay. But in the past, you know, you've told lies, so what do we call a person that's told lies? A liar. A liar. So, but so here's the thing. If God were to judge you, right, would he judge you over your whole life, or would he just judge you by the end of your life, you think? I'm tempted to stay the end of your life because I think life is an evolutionary Yeah, journey. process where yeah. you can change, right? Yeah. I kind of agree with you, but say God is judging you based on he gave out a law right it's um the a ten law? commandments have you ever uh, heard of that before yeah, yeah, of course so just we only went through four of them you admitted to breaking three of them yeah so if god were to judge you on the ten commandments would you be innocent or guilty if you looked at your whole life guilty guilty so would it be heaven or hell well it depends again on your definition of heaven or hell well it would just be his definition of heaven or hell 
according to this definition, I would be going to hell. Yeah, going to hell. Now, if God is is um, true, right, and he spoke to us through his word and the Bible is real, do you believe the Bible? Have you ever read the Bible before? I, th I think that it's been distorted a lot, but I do think it has a divine essence to it. Okay. So, um, I don't know if you've heard in the Bible of Adam and Eve. Of course. And uh, they sinned in the garden, and, and you've probably heard that we've all... Uh, inherited that sin problem from them yes where we all have done wrong so it's not just you uh, that would have said um, that would be guilty against this right we actually all would be guilty correct God says that no one is actually good not even one we've all um, gone our own way we all have gone astray uh, we've all wanted to go do our own thing and we we kind of suppressed God like you said in the in the beginning we kind of a lot of people suppress God and suppress even thinking about death and thinking about the afterlife um, really because of unrighteousness um, but it's kind of human nature now to kind of go against God and do something different agree but do you know what God has done to save sinners who, have, who are going their own way that is going the wrong way I'm gonna assume that you're gonna say that he gave us our Lord and Savior and who's that Jesus that is what I'm going to say. You're going to be pretty good already. So yeah, he did. He sent his son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus was not like us. Jesus lived a perfect life. And he, he, though we sin and we do the wrong thing, he never did the wrong thing. He fulfilled the law perfectly. He lived a perfect and righteous life. And he became the perfect sacrifice on a cross. Have you ever heard of Jesus dying on a cross? Of course. Yep. Have you ever heard what happened after he died on a cross three days later? He was resurrected. He resurrected. Do you know that's the gospel? Yes, I do. Do you know anyone who hears and believes that gospel message? No, I don't. Is given the Holy Spirit and is and the Holy Spirit is their guarantee in, into heaven, eternal I do know life. That, yes. Do you know that? Okay. So anyone who believes in Jesus, right? Jesus is not just a prophet. He's fully God, fully man. And when he lived, he he um, performed a lot of miracles. He was this good moral teacher. He was a prophet, just like a lot of people say. But his main mission was to come and die. And he was dying the death that we deserve on a cross. So God sent his son to be punished on a cross. And do you know who punished Jesus on that cross? The Romans. The Romans put him there, right? And the Jews handed him over. And, you know, it's, it's right that man killed him. But did you know that Jesus, you know, because he was God, do you think that they really, if Jesus didn't want to die, do you think, don't you think he could have just escaped if he was God? Don't you think he could have caught a legion I of angels? I don't think so because he was God embodied in the flesh. So okay. he was subject to limitation. So actually the whole time throughout his ministry, they did try to kill him. Not the whole time, I would say more towards the end. No, in the beginning too, a lot of people tried to kill him, but he would escape. Like, you know, a crowd would be ready to throw him off a cliff, but somehow they, they lost track of where he is. Yeah. You know, he Jesus had that power to escape. You know, Jesus, he walked on water. He was a little bit different than, than just mere man. Okay. Yeah, so, I agree. I agree. Yeah, so like he, he actually raised people from the dead. People who were blind, he touched them and then they were seeing. People who were lame, yeah. uh, like couldn't walk paralyzed, he healed them. And, and, you know, people with diseases, Jesus touched them. And instead of him being infected by the disease, he made them clean. So Jesus was a little bit different, you know. He, yeah, I do agree. You that. do agree. But I, I don't know. I, I think he had healing powers, but I'm not sure he would have been able to escape from the cross if he was nailed to it. Okay. Well, Jesus says Regardless, that he... Regardless, I don't mean to interrupt. No, that's okay. <laughs> I appreciate that. So Jesus says that no one takes my life from me. I lay it down willingly. I think that was more of a metaphor, though. You think that was a metaphor? Well, let's just say you mean it literally. He literally did die, and he prophesied that he would die on the cross, and that's what he came to do. So him dying, you know... Side note, I actually yeah. think that Jesus escaped from the cross. Okay. Yeah, that's what the Muslims say, too. But I don't believe that. I think that Jesus did die on the cross, and you're okay to have your own opinion. Um, but it's it wasn't so much the Romans that put him there, and the Romans. It was God's plan from the beginning to send Jesus to die on the cross. But it was God that punished His own Son. So Jesus stepped in in my place. It should have been me on the cross, me suffering the wrath of God. But Jesus took it for me, and He paid my debt that I owe. So it's either Jesus has paid your debt or that you're gonna to have to pay your debt at the end of your life and, and suffer in hell for eternity. So to think about hell a little bit, you can think about the afterlife. So think about, do you think that um, hell is a place that you would wanna spend 
just your own thinking of it? No. The Bible calls it a weeping place of gnashing of teeth. Jesus says it's better to cut off your right hand and enter into life without your hand than it is for your whole body to be thrown into hell. So it's a very, very bad place. Jesus says it's like fire, it's an eternal flame. So think about being in hell, right? Have you ever been in a sauna before? Yes. How long can you stay in that sauna for? An hour. An hour, right? How about 5,000 years? Probably not. How about 10,000 years? Probably not. How about one trillion years from now? Probably not. Okay, so that trillion years depends on what happens in your life right now. The small little life. You agree, right? So, what if I told you that Jesus offers you forgiveness of all your sin and eternal life with Him? Is that, a, is that an offer that is appealing to you? Very appealing. Very appealing, right? Yes. Only a fool would turn that down. Right? Correct. Correct. Only a, only there a are many fools in today's world. <laughs> There's many fools, yeah. But Jesus calls those who believe in him to repent. Do you know what that means? Of course. Confess to their sins. Confess to their sins, but it also means turn away, change their mind. So turn away from a lifestyle of sin and trust in Jesus alone for salvation, knowing that you yourself, you can't save yourself. You trying to save yourself is like jumping out of a airplane without the parachute and trying to flap your arms. You yeah. think that'll work? Probably not. You need the parachute. You know who the parachute is? Christ. Christ. Jesus Christ is that parachute. So it's logical and it's the right thing to do to put your faith in Jesus Christ. Do you agree with that statement? I do. Do you think that you're a born again Christian? Someone who, so Jesus says you must be born again to enter the kingdom of heaven. Someone who hears and believes the gospel and is given the Holy Spirit. I'm a born again believer in Christ, but not a born again Christian. Okay, born again believer in Christ, but not a, what's the difference? I think the essence of what you're saying, I, I grasp and embody, but not the, not some of the specific So some idea. of the, so what, theology, some of the, the theology. Right, so what is some of the specifics that you are not uh, agreeing with? Um, necessarily that like, God judges our life uh, based on the Ten Commandments. And okay. Yeah, so yeah. that actually, you did a good job because that was more of a hypothetical because, well, God is going to judge us. But, but, but not based on that, I think. So it's not based on that only if you're covered in the blood of Christ. So okay. in the Old Testament, they did animal sacrifices where the animals would die and, and uh, an atoning would be made for the sacrifice of, uh, of blood through the animal. So the animal sacrifice would temporarily cover up sin. But Jesus came, and because without um, blood there's no forgiveness of sin, Jesus came and died once and for all as a way more valuable sacrifice, and not just covered it up, but totally can take it away through his blood and believing in him. Do you think that could be true? Yeah, I do. Okay. So what do you think is a good time to repent and trust in Jesus Christ? Whenever you're open to the possibility of it being a reality. Okay. I think a lot of people write it off as, as nonsense. But, so when but it, the, they'll reach a point where it's like, oh, this, this could be a real thing. So and when then, have you person? sorry, I'm, I cut you off, you got it. No, that's fair. <laughs> so when have you personally done that? Or have you done that yet? Um, prefer not to say. Per, prefer not to say? Yeah. Okay. So it's, it, it's like my life. It's like your life. I know it's your life, but like, wouldn't you want people to know, like, if you are a believer in Christ and you've experienced salvation, wouldn't you want other people to know about it? I think it's not a specific, it's not marked by specific events or even a specific time, but there are multiple times that you can turn to Christ amidst darkness. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that because he's always there with us. He's Correct. still alive today right now. But you do need to go to him and ask him for forgiveness and um and, and personally recognize him as your Lord of your life, not just you making your own decisions. I don't know if I've, I don't know if I have repented to Christ yet. Oh no, okay. So what keeps you from doing that? It hasn't been thrust upon my awareness as a specific action to take as something to enter heaven. Okay. So Jesus says this, and this, this was kind of convincing to me. He says, I am the way, the truth, truth and, and the, the life. life. Yeah, I no don't one any, comes to the Father except through me. You know the rest I, of it? I, I do know. I do know many biblical verses. Okay. So if Jesus is really claiming that, that no one gets to the Father except through him, like he's either telling the truth, he's lying, or he's a lunatic. Like what do you think? 
I think that he's telling the truth, but again, I think it's more of a metaphor than a direct claim that I, Jesus Christ, the person, am the only way to heaven. I think it's more that I am the way. When he says that phrase, I think it's about the way that he was living his life and the, and the perception that he had. Okay, that's fair, but couldn't it be both? It very well could be. Because I kind of think both. Yeah, it could be. What do you think now? I think, like, what do, what do I think of that phrase of like, Christ you think, after our conversation? Yeah, because, like, I think it's willing to consider, like, if he's really the way, the truth, and the life, not just, like, just the way of living, but the only way. Like, he says, no one comes to the Father except through me. Meaning, like, through him. He's the, he's the only way into heaven is by believing on him. Like, that is the only way. God for the world. I don't, world I don't know if our conversation son. has changed my mind. I think there are many ways to heaven. And I think when Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, it's not necessarily that I, Jesus Christ, am, but it's like the principle of what repenting would be. So I think there are many ways to repent and many religions, traditions, different ways that you can repent. But I do agree that the principle of what he's saying and the, the archetype of the psychological event is definitely true. Okay. If that makes sense. Okay, because I think that's that's a dangerous thing because like, what if it really is true that Jesus is the only way and he meant it but in a literal way? what if it's not way? true? Well, that's the thing. That's, we'll go over that too. If it's not true, then okay, there's many ways. I'll see you in heaven, bro. But what if it is true? I make it and that means that someone who doesn't believe that is on the outs. I personally do believe it, but I'm saying that there are many, there's room for other people to not believe it, and I think... Oh, so you I do think, believe, like, Jesus is the only way? I don't for, believe Jesus is the only way, I believe that he is a way. A, a way. So this is, like, my logical thinking, if, like, if Jesus, Jesus is, is... Jesus is a way, and a way that I consider, and, okay. and embody. Right. Okay, so that, so even if he was the only way, I would still be eligible to enter the kingdom of heaven even if I don't believe that he's the only way. Right. Okay. So wouldn't you want to just believe that he is the way though? Because if you're choosing that path anyway, and you know that it's possible that anyone who doesn't believe that would not make it, wouldn't you want to convince people to believe that he is the way, not just a way? I see your point, but I need to be convinced further. Convinced to, further. To preach the gospel to others. Okay. So how about... Over 300 prophecies in the Old Testament Hebrew Bible, and then. But I don't think. But there have been prophecies in many other of the religions that I'm saying that have also come true. Um, not to the extent of the Bible. Of I disagree. So, so what are some in other religions? So there are like prophecies in many African religions, Native American religions. The cosmology of Hinduism and Buddhism is arguably more accurate than a lot of the, the dogma in the gospel. Not that it's incorrect. Okay, I, I would disagree with you, but I, I'm happy you brought that up. So like, the cool thing about um, the Bible is like it kind of proves itself to be true. So like over 300 prophecies that are- I also have to are, go in about one. Okay, sorry. For the, so for just the real quick, just real quick. Over 300 prophecies that are specific about Jesus, 700 years before Jesus is born, and then Jesus fulfills them all. And some of them he couldn't control. Well, I think because he's God, he controlled it. But a person, like, can't just decide when they're going to be born, right? So, like, he, one of the prophecies is that he was going to be born in Bethlehem. He was born in Bethlehem. You know what I mean? I, so, I, I'm not denying that, but I'm saying, why does that mean that he's the only way? As opposed to a Well, way? I think because of every, like, the scripture itself proving he's the Christ and then him claiming to be the only way and him claiming to be the son of God and then his miracles to attest who he was. And then I think the main thing is him rising from the dead. I think he has power over the dead, the dead, but he also, him doing that claimed, like him rising from the dead was him saying everything that I told you was true. But wouldn't that be a metaphor? No, because he physically rose from the dead. But, but why would him physically rising from the dead therefore mean that a statement that you just said is true about him being the only So, way. like him... By like, the way, yeah. I'm just playing devil's advocate here. Okay. Like, I'm just 
rebuttaling you. As yeah, you yeah, I, I appreciate but it. I, I do. And you're right, maybe. Okay, well, any last comments or questions before you go? Oh, Sam, actually, I got some stuff for you if you want, real quick. When's the last time you read a Bible? Mm, a couple months ago. A couple months ago. Do you have one? No, I don't, but I will take one. So this is just a Gospel of John. Lovely, thank you. And uh, this it. is an account of Jesus' life. So thank you, you can decide. So that that book kind of forces you into a decision, or at least he wants you to make a decision. Appreciate it, so thank you. That way that'll help you out. All right, bye-bye, guys. Good right. By the way, I would answer that other question as every other religion is arbitrary and inconsistent. <laughs> bye-bye, thank you. Peace. <laughs> Good job, Joe. <laughs> Good job keeping my mouth shut. Because yeah. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. I get so excited. You can go so it's many so different ways. It's There's hard so to... many ways. Yeah. yeah.